it's going to suck that I have this equity that just goes away if I don't do anything with it. Um, so I'm like, how can I tap into this and use this for when the market gets worse? That's when you can actually make money. When things get cheaper, then you go buy stuff. Don't buy it at the top. Buy it um, when it's cheap or when it's on sale. Same thing with real estate and almost every other investment or asset. Um, real quick, equity is basically the difference between what you owe on something and what it's worth. So if I owe a hundred thousand and the property could sell for 200,000, I have a hundred thousand dollars in equity or 50% loan to value if you're looking, you know, from the lender side. So I came to the realization because you can do something called a cash out refinance where you change your loan um, and take the equity out that way. So in that case, if I owed a hundred thousand and the house is worth 200,000, I can basically borrow up to 75% of that on a traditional cash out refinance. So I could get, what's my math on that? I can get 75 grand basically. So, so my loan would be 175,000, but I would keep the $75,000, which I could use to buy other properties. That, the, the issue with that going on right now is that the rates are higher. So if you're sitting at 3%, now you'd pay more to borrow that money. So you'd be at like 6% theoretically or whatever the rate might be. And you have that for 30 years, which you might not want to do. So then I talked to my good friend Talia who does second liens and I was looking at home equity line of credit and uh, it seemed like a better option. So can you like give us a definition and a functional outline of what a HELOC or a home equity line of credit is. Okay. So dumb it down though. Don't do the, the professional speak. Like. <laughs> I'm not going to do the professional speak. Okay. I don't speak that way to my, my customers exactly. at all. Yeah. But you're sitting with real estate people. So, you know, we tend to like <laughs> <laughs> only when we talk to each other. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, there's two different options when you're looking to tap into your equity. Um, you have the ability of accessing your equity through a fully amortized home equity loan. Mm -hmm. So that particular loan will take second lien position to your existing first mortgage, um, providing you with various options in terms of the, the length of time that you carry the term of the loan without disrupting, as you mentioned, your existing first mortgage. So you get to keep your great low rate mm -hmm. that everybody wants to hold on to those two and three percents that everyone seemed to have taken advantage of just about and not be bumped up to um, what about 6% right now. Right. So they get to keep those. Um, they get to access more equity than they would with a traditional cash out refinance. Cash out refinances are limited to about 80% on average. Conventional. Oh, okay. 80. 80. 75 for investment. Oh, that's why I said 75 because I have all investment the investment properties. properties. Yeah. Um, so it allows them to access a, a bunch more money without disrupting a lot of people like to keep that separate the closing costs are a lot less what it, what what do the closing costs like is there a percentage is there like a flat amount generally like what could you say that in general information obviously guys general information be careful because it depends on your situation blah 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 as a disclaimer but just as a ballpark so like people have yeah no so i mean from what i understand there are lenders that do offer programs with no closing costs. really HELOC, you're, we're talking. HELOC, okay. home equity loans, home equity lines of credit. There are some. Okay. Um, there are certain, I guess, contingencies to it. You right. have to keep it for a certain amount of time. You have to do X, Y, Z. But they do. Um, some lenders will um, advertise no closing costs, but their APRs are, ex are extremely high. Right. So you have to There's keep that fees. in mind. Exactly. So, guys, when you see an APR that's higher than the interest rate, that basically is the fees the difference is the fees that are on the loan so if they're offering you a 10 percent interest rate on a heloc but the apr is 15 percent, there's five percent essentially is like the fees that are associated with it now you're not paying the five percent in interest but however the math works it's works good. out they're going to get their money you're, you're paying <laughs> five you're basically paying like it's 15 percent. absolutely right. but um yeah so a fixed rate home equity loan is an option and then you have the variable interest rate um yeah home equity line of credit product so walk me through how these things work because i've never done one right so i guess what i want to know is what do i pay because my understanding of the line of credit is a line of credit so it's like almost like a credit card so if i get a fifty thousand dollar heloc mm -hmm. 
I only pay when I owe, when I use the money. So when you draw on the account, so some accounts have actual like debit cards associated with them, uh -huh. and some have checkbooks, oh. and some have you know actual web capabilities for you to transfer funds from account to account. Okay. But essentially, the easiest way to express it to a borrower or someone that's not eligible is to say it's essentially like a credit card. Right. Um, so yes, you only pay when you draw on the line. So the home equity lines of credits are structured usually as like five, 10 and like 30 years on average. Yeah. So explain the timelines. Cause I don't, okay. So I have so to pay the whole, so if I use all 50,000 mm -hmm. in five years, I have to pay the whole 50,000 back right then. Or yeah. how does it, how, yeah, how does so, it work? So say for instance, you have a 30 year HELOC mm -hmm. and during that 30 year period of time, there's a 10 year draw period. During that draw period, that essentially means that you're able to access that line. Oh. So you can take 50 grand out of, out of the 50 grand mm -hmm. fully. You could take 10 grand, mm -hmm. pay the 10 grand back, pay the 50 grand back, and you can reuse it. So you can reuse it immediately. You can reuse it, use it during that 10 year draw period, however you wish. Okay. But during that draw period, a lot of people may not fully understand that it is an interest only payment. Okay. So, so like if I take out 50 K, I might have a payment which doesn't pay down the amount, but every month it might be a hundred, two hundred dollar interest payment or whatever. And now that you bring up payments, your payments can fluctuate because your rate is going to fluctuate according to the market. Right. So, so with the heel, but you, the HELOC. there is a fixed, no, there's no fix for HELOC, yeah. at least for your guys, as far as your guys mm -hmm. concerned. Okay. Yeah. So from what I understand, industry standard is they are always variable. Okay. They may yeah. give you, they may give you a few months or a few years depending upon, I guess, right. certain- Just like a credit card. Absolutely. A credit card has a variable have, rate. Okay, mm -hmm. so you have this rate for this amount of time, but it will become varied, and it will be okay. based on the market at that time. So okay. So you have to, in my opinion with that, you have to have a set goal or plans in order to enter into such a thing, like a right. line of credit. Okay. Um, there are so many moving parts, you know, that you can kind of get lost, and if you're if you're- more so one who would prefer to have a set monthly payment that you can budget around and, mm -hmm. and maintain your finances in a more constructive way. Mm -hmm. You want to go more for the home equity loan. You know you're borrowing 50 grand. Right. You know what your monthly payment is month in and month out with the ability to prepay on both. But it's a structured payment, principal and interest payment versus trying to manage an interest only payment on the line of credit. So guys, the, the really important thing about loans over my length of experience here is that they're all different tools and you have to know which tool you should be using for what your goal is. So for, for my example, I would like to have access to funds. I want to be able to tap into my equity when I think the market goes down so I can buy more assets. And so I'm looking for the proper tool to use in that situation to maximize profits going into the recession basically right so there's different ways that you can do it and that's why we're trying to talk about this stuff if you're not super sophisticated you have to be careful because if you're using a tool that you don't know how to use you can hurt yourself just like if you're using a saw and you don't know how to use a saw you might not want to use the most powerful saw because you might cut your hand off so if i were to speak to a, a customer and you stated that was your intent or purpose is to use the funds I would totally be for it. Mm -hmm. I would not even bring up the alternative option to you. Right. If you said, "Hey, Talia, I'm looking for a HELOC," and then I ask you, "What are what are your you know what are you your goals or what are your purposes for it?" You said, "My you know I want to purchase properties going forward." To me, that makes a lot of sense. Right. Um, because essentially, you're going to purchase other properties with it. The mm -hmm. idea is that you gain profit from it, pay the line off. And then reuse it again. Right, exactly. And and my for for part of what I, I think the distinction um, for me is I wouldn't want to do a cash even if the rate was the same. I wouldn't really want to do a cash out and pull my equity when I don't know exactly when I'm going to utilize the money that I'm taking because mm -hmm. I'm paying money. I'm paying interest on money. If I took out fifty thousand, if I don't have a good use for the fifty thousand, it's just costing me money it's just to have, put bank. it in my bank account. Absolutely. Yeah. So. That again, this goes back to the tool thing is like, you have to know what you're trying to accomplish. And because a lot of people get in trouble because they take out, like the pre, you know, the last real estate crash, 
was because people were taking out money and they weren't putting it into things that are beneficial, you know? So even if I borrow against properties, which some people are even against doing that, they don't want to ever take their equity out. As long as your investment properties, in my case, would cash flow, it's very low risk basically because because the renters are paying for whatever the payment is i think you get in trouble if you borrow more than what your max payment was even if i may say like home improvement projects that's also a great way to utilize a line of credit right um some people do you know um i guess projects in series and steps i'm sure you're familiar so you do things and you know i'm going to do the bathrooms Okay, so you do the bathrooms, you pay down the line. Right. You come back. Now I'm going to do the kitchen. Okay, I'm going to, you know, rip up all the floors. Like you, if you do it that way, it's a excellent way to have that access and, and that ability to tap in and out of it without paying additional fees. You avoid that. You have that accessibility over time whenever you're ready. And you can and if you are financially savvy and can manage all the moving parts is a great tool. Yeah, don't do that and just go on a vacation and buy Gucci belts and uh, yeah, no. bottles of 1942, though. But why does it have to be Gucci belts? Because <laughs> that's what people do. 